surprised to learn, which is your currywurst. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? Because I believe the currywurst has a serial number, mm -hmm. like a pot. Yeah. Welcome to The Autobiography, a video series that shines a spotlight on inspiring leaders. It captures their fascinating stories about their personal journeys, key leadership lessons, and uncovers their secrets to success. Today, I am privileged to be joined by Martina Bien, who is Group Chair and MD for VW South Africa. My name is George Mini. Welcome to The Autobiography. Well, Martina, thank you so much for being here. It's really, really nice to have you. Um, Thanks the, for having me. On the autobiography. It's, yeah. uh, it's really a treat. And, uh, you know, I feel privileged to have you in our studio, you know, given that you've really just landed here. Everybody's trying to grab on <laughs> you and, uh, and we got you here. So thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Really, thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. You're most welcome. So I suppose the first, the first question is, this is your second stint um, at VW after being in the group for 22 years? 22 years, yeah. 22 years in the group. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about your previous life uh, back in Germany under passenger cars. Yeah, so I started in VW 2001, obviously, to get to the 22 years in 2023. Um, and um, my really previous life is that I'm a theologian by education. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then 2001, I wasn't so sure whether I really want to become a Sunday school teacher and uh, want to have like a nice uh, afternoon, five o'clock teas with uh, the old people circle or whatever. So I thought, ah, oh, let's think about it. And whilst thinking about it, I was writing three applications uh, out of one, out of which one uh, went to Volkswagen, saying, "Hi, I'm Martina. I could probably help you in HR or in uh, in communications." And Volkswagen came and said, "Hi, Martina. We are Volkswagen. Thanks for applying. Uh, we have got an assessment center, sales and marketing." And we would love to see you there. And it's like, okay, cool. Sage on marketing. Um, let's see. We're going to go there. I was very relaxed. First assessment center in my life. So, and after that assessment center, I started my career at Volkswagen oh, wow. in the sales and marketing space. Uh, that was when Volkswagen back then wanted to or started to entering the, the premium space with a Phaeton, which was a D segment sedan, which never made its way to South Africa, I believe, and uh, with a Touareg one year later in, in 2002. So. Uh, and that was uh, so exciting that I never really thought of now, do I want to become a priest or not? But that's kind of, it was just such a nice journey. So I spent a lot of time in sales and marketing in, uh, at Volkswagen, starting in that we're going to set up that, that premium market entry for Volkswagen, all the strategy around it. So not, not only the vehicle, but different customers, uh, different training for the salespeople, all of that. So it was really interesting, different contracts by then was uh, really interesting and then I'll, I went through like the sales ranks let's say was the regional sales manager for Belgium and Luxembourg um, from there um, I went went back to and then now I got closer to the product already in sales and marketing was heading the product marketing team for uh, for the German market and from there then that was uh, around uh, 2010 uh, I, I, I came to the to the global product marketing product planning. So that's the the phase when we when when the when we're still in a project phase and like how, how what does this product look like? Not in terms of design because that obviously is design doing, but like what can it cost? What features do the customers expect? So that that whole like it's almost a, a more of than a four year development cycle. Uh, I was that sales and marketing yeah, input. I yeah. started in the Golf family, so the Golf Seven has been uh, like inputted and done uh, by by myself and or by my my team. Um, and from there, I, I kind of moved up to all sm small vehicles, so the small car segment globally. Um, that was also like my first, again, professional uh, contact with uh, South Africa from the German side. I was uh, at the Polo launch in South Africa in 2014. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, then from there, um, all the way up to, the, to product marketing, finally leading the product marketing, reporting to the sales and marketing director at this time. Uh, and then he said, now you must sell vehicles. So we'll look some for you for something to where you can sell vehicles. So and then we were seeing, oh, South Africa might be it. And then I came 2018 to South Africa to become head of the Volkswagen passenger car brand. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, oh, so that's that's, a, that's an incredible journey, and I mean, you, know, you compress that into into really short bite size, but you know that that spans a long, yeah, long period yeah. of time. Um, you know, so I, I mean, I uh, one of my favorite cars in my life um, was my uh, a VW. It wasn't yet a City Golf. But it was the City Golf shape. It was pre. It preceded the City Golf. And when you mentioned two thousand and one, um, I was trying to think. I think that was when I was driving that car. It was a, a really a lime green. <laughs> uh, it had um, orange suede seats, mm. and it was a, a one point five litre engine. I remember. But nice. I loved that car. Nice. It was my favourite mm. favourite car. I mean, I was a youngster. I think I was like nineteen years old. Um, and uh, it was one of my favourite cars was that uh, that VW, and one of I've got a lot of a lot of good memories with uh, with VW mm. because of that car. And then I owned a GTI, mm. um, which I think was the Golf Three GTI. It was the bubble shape, the first mm. bubble shape after the uh, City Golf shape. Um, uh, I, can't, I don't know which exactly which model it was. More like a Golf yeah. Four, but anyway, Golf as long as it's four. a GTI. It might have been the yeah, 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 it was a GTI. It was a must, yeah. pitch black one. Oh, I love that car too. Anyway, that, yeah. was, that was my kind of <laughs> VW experience. So, so, so personally, you're into things like running, hiking, reading, and red wine. Apparently, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> tell us, tell us a little bit, bit, bit about your passions outside of VW. So yeah, I can, and that's that's the great and the beauty about South Africa. There's so many things which uh, uh, around my passions, right? So I love South African wine, indeed. Um, would love to get more also like in, into the, the, the like wine knowledge. So I spend a day or two with uh, some sommeliers in South Africa. Is but your office in Joburg or Cape Town or uh, down at the Eastern Cape? Nice question. Uh, <laughs> I'm based in Karicha, where okay. our plant is. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you're not Eastern close Cape. to the wine farms. I'm not close to wine okay. farms, but uh, a, a nice drive uh, at the garden route would bring me immediately, let's say, to the, to yes, the wine farm. Yes. So no, it's um, so Pinotage is my favorite uh, red wine, which which is yeah I, I just uh, like it very much. I love hiking. I loved also hiking uh, already before South Africa. But uh, there's so many like nice uh, nice trails uh, up here in the NSO. We I was forcing my team forcing my team that we have a hiking circle. So every not every but a lot of Sundays we were just like uh, around here somewhere hiking like Henop's uh, hiking trail or something like that. So that was very nice. Um, I also like to do some like more day hikes where you just carry your luggage, but you still end up in a in a hut. So yes. not not like also carrying the tent because yeah. you see I'm not that super strong person. Anyway, um <coughs> so I've been to a Mount Everest base camp, for example. That oh was wow. probably my the, the the greatest hike I've I've done in terms of length, but yes. also in terms of wow. And then you st see the Mount the Everest. Sun, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of wow. wow. So tell uh, tell me about your teenage years a little bit. Um, what were your dreams? Because I mean, you told me a little bit about how you got into VW. Mm. You applied at multiple places, and VW was the most interesting, and mm. that's the one you went for. But you know, quite often as teenagers, I remember when I was a teenager, um, I could never have dreamt my career path up. Mm. I couldn't have dreamt it up. It's, you know, it's, it's totally different to what I assumed life would mm. be. What were your dreams no back quite. then? So I'm from a, if you're in any like personality test kind of thing, I'm in Enneagram, I'm a seven. So we are the, like the butterfly. So we love we love opportunities and we love this flower and then we love this flower. So I had, I had a lot of dreams. So always this exciting because you look for these beautiful flowers always, yes, right? Yes. So probably the first thing I remember is that I wanted to become a firefighter. Oh, wow. uh, but there was only a short period of time and I was really young. And then I was really following up a long period where I wanted to be an archaeologist. With a uh, with a yeah with a main topic and f like uh, researching in Egypt because I was fascinated by that Egyptian culture and I wanted to discover a new pyramid or a new oh, Tutankhamun wow. um, grave site or whatever. I'm I'm I think I'm better where I am now so and not digging in the sand of the Sahara. Um, and after that, I think that was uh, close to metric. I, I thought I, I'm going to become a doctor, um, like a medical doctor, um, but was very specific on I want to be the doctor who's flying on the helicopter. 
Ah, okay. So, was, so it's a kind of a firefighter, of doctor, fighter. Yeah, I was probably these are, always a bit yes. of the adventurous side uh, yeah. on, of, of the job profiles. Yeah, so that were my childhood dreams. And there is not really, a, a, probably the adventure, but there is not really a reason why I was kind of, I can't follow, like, follow a career path, obviously, and uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess the, uh, the, the, the outdoors nature that you have, running, hiking, and uh, I don't know about the red wine. I suppose that's visiting wine farms. If you're, South <laughs> if you're in South Africa and you don't like wine, then yeah, I don't know, yeah. there's something got wrong. You've got a problem, yeah. You've got a problem, exactly. <laughs> so how has your thinking evolved now as an adult? Um, you know, what has changed in your mind as you've um, gotten older and matured? Yeah. I like this beautiful thing of, um, wow, getting enthusiastic about a lot of topics and kind of, yay, and that's a great idea, and let's do that, and let's, let's do that. That, uh, that, of course, sometimes also has a bit the downside that you then like you, you, you start one, then you start the next, then you start the next. Like I, I, had, I have more patience now in also like following probably like uh, a bit of a, uh, a tougher period or just like being a bit routine and not again the next uh, fireworks already the next day. So that, that definitely changed. I wouldn't say kind of I'm more quiet now or more, I'm more relaxed. Uh, yeah. And I'm not that much driven, more like, okay, what's the next new thing? What's the next new thing? So that, that fortunately changed a bit because that g gives me a bit of like depth, which I was probably every now and then lacking when I was uh, really young. Yeah. Well, I suppose most teenagers are kind of on to the next thing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, know, yeah. Uh, <coughs> and and uh, what you're saying is you, you kind of now have learned to see things through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 22 years in VW, that's seeing things through, uh, you know, in, in terms of your amazing 22-year career. So if you had a time machine and you could go and tell your younger self something, what would you tell your younger self? I would probably tell my younger self um, always try to have fun, do or not try to have fun, not in that superficial sense, but um, do what you love to do. Because don't plan your career like uh, this is, I'm going to do this now, this now, and only check on does that kind of give me any advantage, which I can see now, but rather uh, really have fun and enjoy what you're doing and be passionate about what you're doing and do uh, what you want, would like to do and then I think you'll be you'll be best and I'm not saying that I didn't do that yes, but that yes. was more like I would encourage my young self again to to exactly stick to that because yes. that kind of yeah that's that's a very uh, for me it's it works very well to to really look at kind of what, yeah. what do I like what do I love yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like you really uh, got the seeds of those passions going in the, you know, helicopter paramedic, if I, if, uh, <laughs> if I yeah. can think about a helicopter paramedic or, or a firefighter, <laughs> um, you know, or a doctor. There's, you know, there's a, there's a golden thread yeah. there. So, you know, those are, those, are, those are good passions to have. So now you're, um, you're group chair and MD mm. of VW. South Africa. Mm -hmm. Did I say the title right? Yeah. Um, and um, how does that feel? And uh, you know, what have you learnt over the last hundred days that um, you know you're going to take into the next three hundred days? Mm. So, so first of all, after my first uh, stint in South Africa, I went back to Germany, and that was the first time when I g went out of my sales and marketing environment uh, because then I had. I had engineers and in like all areas um, of the company reporting into myself uh, again being in the car on the car project side but that helped a lot and that was gearing me up for that MD role now because now I have a plan uh, to run and of course I have a production director and uh, I've got the finance side and of course I've got a finance director but still it's kind of it's now about the whole company it's yes. not about only sales and marketing anymore so that was there was a very good preparation for me my uh, my role in in, in Germany um, for this job and I mean you get uh, you, you become um, a bit humble also um, because now there's 4,000 people directly working for Volkswagen passenger car or for, for, for Volkswagen Group South Africa plus you impact another 20 30,000 uh, with the suppliers and with the families so it's it's kind of it's a huge responsibility which uh, which uh, apart from the business side and like run it on a daily basis which is of 
of course what we're trying to do. You, you, I mean, it sounds like your, 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 one, of your, one of your key learnings so far has been, you know, just kind of how humbled you are at the impact your role yeah. can have, yeah. which I think, I think is an important thing in a, in a leadership role is uh, you, you mentioned another 30,000 people. So maybe as leaders, we often forget that our role's impact is not our direct line reports. It's way yeah, beyond that, 100%. you know, and you just mentioned 30,000 potential yeah. people that, uh, that your role, role impacts. Um, so how then do you adapt in the varying cultures? Because um, you grew up in Germany, um, you've come to South Africa now twice, you've experienced German culture, mm. South African culture, which is multi-versed. Mm. Um, how do you adapt as a leader to that varying culture or those varying cultures? So I love, I love being exposed to other cultures anyway, because the one thing I, I love about this is that you learn so much about yourself and your own culture in things kind of which like, wow, that's interesting. I never thought about this. So also like my Germanness coming through every now and then uh, with the South African culture, it's a specific culture. I, I just, I love South Africa and these South African cultures. So I've been already the first time I immerse myself a lot into that South African culture, which I probably would not do in, in any culture. I don't know why it clicks so well, but it, uh, in, it in fact it does. So yes. I'm, a, I'm an Orlando Pirates fan. I'm a Buccaneer having oh, my wow. jersey, looking forward to the next derby. Um, I learn easy closer now because I, I want to also like, of course I will never be like super fluent, but it's kind of, I want to have good conversations with also the people on, on the schlock floor. And of yes. course we could have them in English, but just because it interests me and I want to kind of understand more of, uh, of that culture, for example. So I'm, I'm yeah. trying it and also uh, visiting my Sangoma soon for the first time oh, wow. just to... Yeah, just to uh, Immerse yourself. learn yes. also something yes. about it, not only by reading, but also kind of just yes. experiencing it. Yeah. So, so it, was that the was that the draw that um, because I believe that you fought to come back to South Africa. Mm. You know, tell us a little bit about how you fought to come back to South Africa, and was it the the, the 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 culture and the country that drew you back in the way that you're describing? It was actually when I was here the first time with VW, it was already my second time. Even when I studied theology back then, I had an internship in South Africa, in Cape Town at the UCT, at the Anglican Student Society. So just like, so that was my first, like also a bit, uh, getting into contact with the South African culture, 1997 back then. So, uh, and definitely, I was, I, I'm, I'm, as I said, passionate about South Africa and also about the possibilities. And I, and I wanted to be part of, probably also playing a role in growing these possibilities of, of the country of VW as a brand in South Africa, VW as a brand in Africa. So it's kind of, yeah, not saying it's a bit explorational, but I, I saw so much thing which can happen and I wanted to be part of that. Yeah, and, and that's, that's probably also why I'm back. Uh, being part of making a bigger difference. Yeah. Um, so, so let's get on to VW for a little bit. Um, how, how many VWs are produced in South Africa? Uh, depending on how many semiconductors we get allocated. Uh, <laughs> the plant has a capacity of 161,000. By the end of this year, we, would, uh, we want to even increase it to 171,000. That's per annum? That's per annum. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, last year, because of the semiconductor shortage and partially also because of load shedding, um, we, we uh, produced uh, 132,000. So okay. it could have been 29,000 uh, VWs more. Or yeah. Yeah. under normal circumstances. But this year we are quite confident that we are probably not hitting max capacity already this year, but uh, that we are better off in terms of semiconductors than last year. And how many of those do you export? Um, around 70% okay. of the, of the, of the okay. locally produced vehicles. Um, because I mean, we're going to get into the the EV discussion mm. in a few minutes, mm. and you know that uh, that export volume, which is very high for VW, is is quite an important part. Um, so, the, talking about the Polo, before we get into the EV discussion, um, there are a few variants of the Polo that uh, you're going to discontinue. Um, the the Polo is probably, I, no, I don't think it's probably, I think it definitely is mm. the most popular car in South mm. Africa on Auto Traders platform. It's the most mm. searched for variant. Um, and I'm pretty sure that it's the most sold variant in the country mm. as well. You're uh, ceasing to produce a few of those um, in the coming year. Why is that? Well, we are not really discontinuing many variants. So we keep our trend lines, our comfort lines, our high lines. Uh, we, of course, the GTI um, 
uh, every now and then we'll have to, but also no, also from an engine perspective, we we're going to fully continue with Apollo. Okay. Uh, and uh, and however the discussion also with Europe, and I think we'll get to this pens out. Uh, the Apollo for South African market will remain here for a very long time. Okay, I, I got no doubt. I mean, yeah. it's, if the Polo if the Polo went somewhere, I think yeah. I think you'd have a cult following that would uprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. The Polo <laughs> belongs to South Africa and will will be in South Africa. Yeah. So kind of that. 70% export mm. number um, is is quite a concern, not for VW, but particularly for me as a country. Mm. You know, there's uh, your 70% is higher than the national average mm -hmm. of just over 60, I think, percent of our uh, vehicles are exported. Um, and the EU has this EV deadline. Mm. We call it an EV deadline. I suppose it's a zero carbon emissions deadline. Mm. And, uh, and so given that 70% of your vehicles are exported, um, which means, m makes export then the, the predominant part of the mm. VW's business, um, how is VW changing in South Africa in order to adapt to that world that Europe is putting a deadline on um, to not lose the 70% of the export? Mm. So one part, and that's the main part of the strategy I'm also like trying to accelerate now for VW is that we want to uh, look more into the African business, Sub-Sahara, but also North Africa to offset potential export losses uh, to Europe whenever they um, come. And there's that African Continental Free Trade Agreement now, which is, is coming in place. There is, um, or I see coming a huge demand for automotive industry, for industrialization in Africa, but also for for new vehicles and also Volkswagen has a very good reputation, although like probably only known from, I don't know, newspapers or internet or whatever, and unfortunately some gray car imports uh, in, in Africa. So that's one of our strategies to grow in Africa um, to, to offset export um, losses to Europe. Another thing is that we are looking into an additional uh, product for our Carija plant. Um, around 2026, 2027, to then run three products, uh, Polo, Polo, Vivo, and the third product to probably even have more market share in South Africa, but it's also a, a tailor-made product for, for, for Africa itself, to, to then uh, make sure that we fill the 162,000 or 171,000 capacity by then. I suppose the market forgets about Africa and focuses on this EU deadline, mm. where, whereas you know, Africa is a big continent and probably not being serviced the way that uh, it could be serviced. Mm. And, uh, and you know, good on VW for seeing the opportunity because my belief is it's, it's, gonna, it's probably going to take 30 years to transition South Africa to an EV market. Mm. You know, we just don't have the volume and the, and the, and the car park mm. to, to transition as quickly as we, we need to and the load shedding and power problems, you know, let's not talk about that. So, so let's talk about EVs for a second if you don't mind, Martina. So obviously in the next year, two years, VW is going to bring some EVs to, mm -hmm. to market, the ID4, I believe, mm. um, and some others. Um, those are initially, I assume, going to be imports. Mm -hmm. um, um, but talking about manufacturing EVs, is it a strategy to retool a plant or does a OEM have to rebuild the plant from scratch? No, in, and you can retool the plants, so otherwise it would, it would be an endeavor, would never be, um, be feasible. So the first thing is that we are currently looking into partnering and doing that already with Brazil, um, the African continent, as South Africa and India, because the speed we, we develop probably into EVs would be quite similar. That's the, that's the current guess. India yes. is now, yeah, let's see, probably they're even a bit faster. Uh, that, uh, first of all, gives us a good advantage in terms of also internal combustion engine vehicles because like Latin America is big, they've got their own development, Volkswagen development uh, department, they can do combustion engines and we can partner with them and probably help them with the right-hand drive development, for uh, example. Okay. So that's, that's cool. With them, we're also looking into a really, let's say, global electric vehicle, which is then also which is affordable for global markets. And if we find that would would then really increase the, the not the demand, demand is there, but yeah, customers who could afford an, an EV in Africa. Or I don't think that it takes that long 
like 30 years, I see us uh, potentially building uh, electric vehicles probably 2035. Okay. The, the difficult thing is not like getting a technical release and waiting for the budget speech, by the way, this uh, next week, uh, the week after next week, because we all, all manufacturers, we are really looking uh, for an indication now. We've got together with NAMSA, we put a EV white paper together on how to kind of start the journey with import, but also with subsidizing imports of EVs, yes. which will never be a huge amount of vehicles. So like loss of tax revenue is probably not the biggest problem, but to, to start that journey and yes. to start also building uh, public char charging infrastructure and to also like change the customer behavior surely but slowly um, and, and move into a space where then by probably 2035 we've got 50,000 electric vehicles sold in South Africa from Volkswagen yes. because this is what we do with Polo, Polo Vivo currently yes, yes. So to, to make sense. From Volkswagen as a company, because many many plants in Europe also have not trans transformed yet into an electric vehicle plant. So would they now look at us saying, okay, you do electric vehicles now and export them to Europe as we do with the Polo? No, they don't. Because yes. um, what kind of, where do we get the batteries from? Uh, coming with a ship uh, to uh, South Africa, then we produce the vehicle here, then we send the whole vehicle up on a ship. So Volkswagen is currently looking really at the CO2 footprint, not only of the production of the vehicle, but like the whole supply chain. And yes. they would always would now look first into transforming the, the, the European plants. They are all about to be not rebuilt, but really like retooled. refurbished or retooled, yes. uh, except yes. the, the one in, in Wolfsburg, where we said now we've got that special plant uh, because we want to really be fast in the production. But yes. um, that's in the big investment is not in the, in the plant or retooling the plant but uh, really in the, in the EV development. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's encouraging. And uh, the reason I say 30 years is, is, is not that we will be selling 100% EVs mm. within 30 years, but it, I think it will take that long t for every car that you see on the road to be an EV. Because yeah, no, we've got to move yeah, the yeah, other yeah, cars out true. of the yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so 50,000 by 2035, you know, for me, that sounds like a good, uh, mm. a good, a good thing to shoot for. Talking about EVs, and before we get off that topic, um, what is VW's um, outlook on the grid in South Africa, given EVs? What is your opinion on the load shedding, and, uh, and how do we solve this problem? Mm. So now, I've got a very strong opinion on load shedding, as <laughs> I believe all, every South Everybody African has. as well. Because load shedding, of course, does not help, also does not help in ICE production. Fortunately, we don't have to load ICE or charge ICEs, but still we have to produce them. So yes. load shedding stage six means we'll go in short time. The plants stop when there's yeah. load shedding? From level six onwards, we'll have to stop. We can't, wow. because... And there's also not really a, like a short-term solution to go off the grid, like power intense operations, yes. like for example, paint shop which you can't like run with a kind of, okay, let's have a little generator on site. One midterm probably solution to, to overcome that in terms of production is uh, the, the green hydrogen initiative from the government. So we see whether that is an option. Kucha is, I think, going, going big on green hydrogen, which yes. is not too far from our, our plant, but still 30 kilometers. We, we've got solar panels on the roofs. We've invested in wind wheeling, um, but that, that unfortunately only keeps the lights on and the laptops working. So yes. kind of, I'm safe, but unfortunately the car production is, uh, is not safe with load shedding. And also now when we look at an additional ICE product, as I was, uh, alluding to earlier on and kind of in in the global scheme of our 121 plants uh, my my headquarter is looking at kind of okay are you able to uh, to produce uh, on a in a stable way are you is is the logistics okay fortunately port in Carija is very good um Transnet to transport uh, vehicles amongst the country, uh, yes, there's challenges as well. So really also not even only for EV, the grid is a challenge, but for us now as a manufacturer, load shedding level six upwards is, uh, is a challenge and also for our suppliers. And then we come again to that uh, f like 4,000 direct employees plus another 30 to 40,000, uh, including suppliers. Um, running on short uh, short time or, or whatever, so that's that's really that's really an issue. Um, we are looking into yet more on the EV side into um, energy storage solutions. So we've just like built our first flex pole charger in the plant to show that it's kind of working and that can that these chargers can store energy for 
um, it, it, it to for vehicles like for 48 hours, you can constantly could constantly charge uh, vehicles. Um, you could also run a complex with it um, with these flex pole chargers. Um, w and, and for the second generation, and we've just started the discussion with our German power co team. It would be great if these can also feed back to the grid, not yeah. only charge vehicles, but feed back to the grid, because that would probably even be f uh, earlier adopted than electric vehicles, because then you've got the you can can the run your complex power. with yeah. uh, with with load shedding. So yes. we kind of, and that's also a part of or a fun part of that story to to look um, left and right on or what else because. Um, I think in the midterm we also must at least think of something like battery assembly in South Africa or in somewhere in Africa. Yes. Um, ideally, bat battery manufacturing, um, which because all the raw material is here, but yeah. the, the processing unfortunately happens then in, in China. Well, I mean, it, feel, it feels to me like as a country we've got the raw materials. Yeah. We 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 export it. We sell it yeah. to these people overseas. Um, they manufacture the battery mm -hmm. and then we import it paying their profits mm -hmm. exactly um, and then we use it in South Africa it's, it's, it's almost like it's a no-brainer to assemble the batteries in the country or in the continent at least yeah um, you know so so you know that makes me kind of optimistic that if somebody can come along and really at scale assemble batteries mm. not even necessarily produce them but mm -hmm. at least assemble, assemble them would be you know that would be a first uh, a first step yeah that's also like what we're looking in but also therefore you need more volume even even if i would have 162 volkswagen vehicles um, EVs only produced in that plant that's for a, for a battery factory that's t again too, too small. small so the smallest size currently of one of our of, of our giga factories is th 300,000 so but then this energy storage solutions and charges help because yes. you also you kind of you add that to the to the volume uh, you produce for the vehicles yes yes but, uh, yeah. So let's get on to something uh, uh, a little bit fun which I was surprised to learn which is your currywurst yeah um, how did that come about? Because I believe the Currywurst has a serial number, mm -hmm. like a part. Yeah. Um, how did that come about in VW? So it, it's always been there since I started there. So 2001, it was already all, all, all about Currywurst. I don't know when it started. I believe probably even earlier than the first Golf or whatever. So when I started, every so, so Tuesday is Currywurst Day in the in the plant. So every Tuesday you get you can get your Currywurst in the canteen. Yes. Um, and except like in the real canteens close to the production areas, so where the really hardworking people are, because they need their Currywurst 24/7 every day. So that's so there is some canteens where you can get them for breakfast for for lunch, for for night shift, so that you just like survive. No, they've got a part number and own one, of course, oh, wow. because they're, they're Volkswagen branded. They've branded. But the Volkswagen, the, the, uh, really? like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, they've got it on, on the worst itself. You don't do this in South Africa, do you? No, unfortunately no. not. But we were okay. thinking of like different business opportunities. So probably it is one because everybody wants one. Also like our journalists, uh, who have been with us on one of the Germany travels. I think there was kind of, can we have currywurst? Please, can we have currywurst? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a famous thing. And we sell more currywurst uh, than, uh, than vehicles per year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, and, and so you can also now buy them not only in the canteen, but can also buy them buy in the, the supermarket. Market. Yeah, there's and also a VW ketchup special recipe. Yes. A secret sauce, so to say, uh, for that currywurst. Uh, also branded, of course, the bottle. Uh, and yeah. I, d I don't see why not. I mean, it's, it's German, it's VW. Yeah. It, it, just, it just makes sense. So th tell us about the day in the life of Martina. How do you spend your day generally? So now I'm embracing now the beach life of Carija in Port Elizabeth. So I'm or Kribeja. I'm I kind of my home is now in Kribeja, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I kind of I'm a bit like an old diesel engine. Although though I'm not super old, but I need some coffee before I really can start. So probably an hour. I just now sit on my couch, watch the dolphins going mm -hmm. in uh, St. Francis Bay, J Bay's direction. And then when they come back, I know now it's time to, to go to, to work. I've finished my coffee, kind of uh, the okay. light is on for the diesel engine, we can go. Uh, there is not really a routine because I was like the first weeks and months I was traveling so much and I'm up here in, in, uh, in Joburg uh, because our sales organization is here. So I, sp I spent time with them. Then I traveled Africa to accelerate this African 
um, an African uh, or, or African business. Uh, so there is not really that routine. Uh, when I am in Tribeca, I'm I'm not working from home. So I know it, I love to be with the people. So. Mm -hmm was going to the plant every day I was there and uh, when it was not a weekend of course um, it, it, my my day currently is uh, is it doesn't matter whether I'm now in Joburg or or uh, Kariha plant is really meeting after meeting and uh, connecting to people and listening to people and uh, spending time with them and uh, we're working on that exciting strategy 2035 covering our uh, South African sub-Saharan uh, endeavor, our EV plans, uh, so really uh, working on the product for 2026, so really being currently busy to pave the path and, and shape the future of, of the company so that we can tick the boxes of this is what we're going to do by the end of this year. I mean, th that's fascinating. So, so you don't really have a routine, um, you know, because other people I speak to, it's okay, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll have my coffee, I'll check my email, then I'll go to the gym, then I'll go to the office and then I'll have meeting after meeting and then I'll come home and uh, I'll do X, Y and Z. So you have a mm. really flexible mm. kind of routine so you don't you don't try and box yourself mm. into uh, into doing one thing no, except the morning coffee that is That's a fixed yeah. thing yes uh, and i'm getting grumpy when there's only instant coffee in a hotel oh uh, i'm with you yeah. i'm a coffee nut yeah. um, bean coffee is the only way to go yeah. I, I think the other stuff is fake um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not real coffee. Yeah. So, but th for the rest, I'm I'm really flexible. Of course, there's some routine meetings yes. like our board of management, which we've got every Tuesday, um, kind of uh, kind of that. But uh, I just like take it as it comes. Take it as it comes. So then, how do you maintain work-life balance? Because uh, you know, quite often in a very senior role like yourself, um, work can take over. Mm -hmm. Work can become mm -hmm. everything, especially if sales decline you know mm. the moment sales decline you feel like you have to do something how do you maintain the balance in life mm. so uh, that was one thing i had to my father was was very german right and my father well, it's kind of i had to learn that work can also be fun because my, that's kind of okay this is the work part this is the fun part so he and he was very strict so he was working then he comes home and, and work was work and then he comes home and then there's fun so there was never i mean there was before smartphone times and there, but there was never a phone call from business uh, at home because that just couldn't happen yes. so it's either or so and now uh, it for me it got much more mixed and I learned I don't know how I learned but it kind of oh, that that is also fun and of course you must you can't be 24 7 only on on that work part but already with realizing that this kind of it's not that stressful because there's also the, the, a huge amount of fun I think that helps me a lot to just, as I said, enjoy what I'm doing. Yes. Uh, and also on the stressful part, if sales declines, or so earlier on, also back in my f like v VW beginnings, you were then busy in kind of, why did it go down? Okay, cable theft again with Transner. We couldn't bring the vehicles up, we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that. So explaining hours and hours why it's going down and today and that's kind of that's how I approach it and that's the good thing also about uh, being probably MD or being head of a brand or whatever it's kind of okay yes we know that's bad with the, with the cable theft but uh, what are we going to do so not not how do we fix the cable theft but okay where can we then sell vehicles or how can we increase market share so rather focus on the, on the opportunities of uh, yes it's a problem I understand that but uh, let's make a plan as mm -hmm. a South African would say and and I think that like positive attitude of let's make a plan even if it goes south um, that also helps me a lot in terms of my my mental balance because then I get excited about the plan we're going to make and the positivity uh, yeah positivity. yeah I was I'm, I'm busy reading a book at the moment and uh, and one of the stories in this book is um, the the, uh, the very short. Uh, writer asked a person in a wheelchair don't you feel restricted um, you know being in a wheelchair mm. and the person's answer was fascinating he said I'm grateful for my wheelchair because without it I wouldn't have mobility mm. so instead of focusing mm. on the negative yeah, nice. of not being able yeah. to walk he focused on the positive part of the wheelchair yeah. is what you're saying so in that context what advice would you give to other people, maybe young leaders coming up in stressful jobs? Uh, what advice would you have to them? I think it's very important is that you know yourself, that you know how you function, how you kind of and, and have, a, have a really honest uh, view on 
on who you are and, and how you are. And, and that helps you, that also helps you then in, in leading other people. So kind of my first team structures I did were horrible because it was easier to get along with uh, like more or less the same kind of people. So it kind of, it was like, oh, it's, it's like a copy of me and another copy of me because it was so easy, but that's you, what you should put in a team, but you should rather like complement your weaknesses uh, and your strengths. So yes. like I'm, for example, I'm not very much into detail. I can't kind of do that Excel, that lengthy Excel sheets forever or whatever. And so I need people who love details. Yes. Yeah, to, and, but therefore you need to know what's, what's like stresses you, what, what, where you're good in and what you're, what you're not so good in. I think first, first thing is know yourself know and yourself. Know, know what you, what you're good in and, and not so good in. And uh, positivity always works, look for opportunities. It takes the same time, uh, like uh, also at work. You can spend a, a day of eight hours forwarding emails to somebody because you're not responsible, declining eight proposals because you just like yeah. decline them. But you can, in same same time you can use in, I've solved a problem, I've uh, achieved something, I've got a good idea and the the, it will be so much more rewarding uh, and also the dinner table hero conversation with your family or your friends yeah. will be so much better than what have you done today? No, I forwarded eight emails because I wasn't in charge. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> really, so, yeah, yeah so fantastic. So know yourself and focus on the positive yeah. problems you can yeah. solve, which, uh, which I think is good advice. So, so you're a reader, you like reading books. Mm. Um, do you have any suggestions on books you've read that stood out um, and, and why you would suggest them? I love um, Hit Refresh from Satya Nadella. I only recently read it again because I want to kind of that's also part of my mission to have a, of a culture shift in the VW company. So that's what I'm uh, what I'm driving with the team now to to change the company culture. And I think the journey of Microsoft and how he described it and how he managed uh, that cultural transition that was f is fantastic. So that's very, very interesting book because also Microsoft as a company had to change. And yes. we as VW company, we have to change. We'll have to transition into electric. We'll have to refocus from export to Europe to now uh, to, to Africa. The whole industry is going digital. So how to manage all these challenges, which we have not had the last 72 years, uh, which we've been in this country. Um, because I'm so much interested in, in Africa currently, I read a very interesting book. It's called um, Africa is not a country. Uh, starting with the colonial history and why probably many things went wrong with uh, with that and uh, like sketching a continent which nobody knew on a white paper in, in Berlin 1974 and the journey from there so yes. very interesting and I'm I'm a big fan of and I never know to how to pronounce her correctly uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie she's Nigerian Nigerian author also TED talker um, uh, showing a very, I think, not very well-known side of Africa, at least not to, to Europeans. So very beautiful stories. My favorite book of her is probably Americana. Okay, that's, that, that's fascinating. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure some a lot of people are going to take value, value out of that. Um, and, then, and then almost done, Martina. Oh no, second just started. <laughs> second, to last, second to last question I have for you, and that is, how do you manage the different stakeholder draws on your energy? Because quite often, the people of the business want different things. Um, and uh, your shareholders and other stakeholders want other things like revenue growth, profitability. How do you manage the juxtaposition between the two? Because being MD, uh, group chair, um, means that you're squarely in the middle of those two stakeholders. And uh, quite often it can be hard to balance. Yeah, um, we currently in our, in our current VW setup, I think it's the best one we ever had for the African endeavor. So with Thomas Schaefer now being CEO of our global Volkswagen passenger car brand, who has been in my role uh, until 2020, in my current role until 2020, and he is, and I've learned a lot from him. He's he's a big believer also in the potential of Africa, and he loves South Africa and. Uh, now with me uh, knocking at the headquarters door with the one or the other crazy idea, uh, it's not saying that he always says, no, just do it, but we have an, uh, yeah. he, he's always got an ear, he's, he's, as I said, he's, it's, it's huge support, and he, because he knows what I'm talking about, uh, he's very supportive and, and at least open. 
of course we are also KPI managed, but as long as we deliver our ROS uh, or our operating result, there's, yeah. there's probably also some money to play here or try this or try that. And um, and also, like that, that startup um, company, we don't put a lot of risk in. When we start uh, Mobility Solutions Rwanda, let's say, what we've done, which is uh, f profitable now after four years, but which was, which was a bit of a startup character, but you don't burn immediately like 10 millions, 20 millions of, re of, of euros uh, or 100 millions of, of rands. It's just, it starts small and then yeah. we must just get more to that. Okay, then fail fast and either you learn and improve or you stop it. But it's not, uh, we don't put the, c like the, the company at risk in now trying Africa or trying, trying something uh, yes. new. So um, with, with the support and that open ear and of course delivering the performance which is expected from us. Uh, if you don't do that, then, well, that's then the you get a problem. Right? Yeah. But uh, as long as that comes, uh, all the support is with us currently. Well, that's nice. It's nice that you have a, 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 a cheerleader, uh, you know, in yeah. Germany that, uh, you know, that has lived the life here yeah. effectively. So very finally, and I'm, I'm, I'm sad that our, our time together has come to a, an end, but um, your top three learnings from your life, what would you say they are if you had to give advice to everybody listening to this? What would your top three lessons be? Business life doesn't matter. Okay, my top, but like that talks to my person. So again, uh, do what you love, what, uh, where your passion is. Whatever you do, just take a step back and just relax a bit before you take a decision. And the third one, you must all come to South Africa. That's a good idea. I like <laughs> that idea. Because spend all the euros here and all the dollars here. And then you send them back. And yeah, the, and yeah. The, yeah, and buy all the wine. Yeah. I think yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, buy all yeah, the yeah. wine. That's been fascinating, Martina. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. I feel very humbled to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, all the best to VW and you. Yeah, thank you. It was great being here. Hope we continue our conversation. Absolutely. Fantastic. No, thank you.